Andrew here from BBB with John Doherty, the super middleweight, is that right? We're sticking with super middle for now? Yeah, super middle. Super middleweight sensation, 9 and as a pro, John. You're one of the few who's actually boxed since lockdown. How was that all, the, the whole fight camp experience for you? Yeah, it was good. It was just a bit different, to be fair with you. Um, it was really like an amateur days, to be fair with you, when I, don't know, when I boxed over abroad. Um, it was like that there, just your opponent in the same hotel, um, you're seeing them every day. Um, it just remembered me as the amateur days, yeah. It was um, it was different going about it. Like It was just obviously locked in the room for a lot amount of time and getting the COVID test and then waiting, thinking if you're going to pass or not pass. It, just, um, it was all a bit... Listen, it was a new experience and um, I enjoyed it. And then the main thing was I got the win. So, like, for those that don't know, obviously we'll touch on you. We'll go into your amateur experience and your amateur background. Like, successful amateur, you Commonwealth Games bronze medalist, that right? Yeah, youth um, Commonwealth gold, uh, European silver medal. Um, I think I was six or seven time national champion, um, five time British champion. Um, yeah, basically, and uh, like I won all my novices and like I had a hundred and about one hundred and forty fights and lost fourteen. That's a hell of a record, like in it. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, you you sort of a, a boxer that I was aware of, like from following the like, amateurs, not <laughs> pros to you. The Commonwealth Games, youth Commonwealth, things like that, you sort of stand out and when you're sort of in boxing, you, you pick up these names and things. But like as a pro, we actually saw you make your debut, obviously, at Newcastle. Newcastle, yeah. Like, how did that come about? So from you going from like being a successful amateur where like Matchroom and other promoters sort of keeping tabs on you and like, sort of making them interest known, how did it all come about? Just basically, obviously, um, the, uh, Eddie Hearn and some of the few of the promoters kept an eye on me. I mean, obviously, I was doing well as amateur, so it wasn't that I had to get signed over, to be fair with you. It was just who I was going to go with. Um, and actually, um, a boy called Charles Sims, Tony Sims, who trained me, his son got in contact with me, and he, he said, he want, my, dad, my dad wants you down for training. And I said, yeah, Tony's obviously a great trainer, and obviously I took the opportunity and uh, went down training with Tony Sims for a week. He liked me. He said, when you want to turn over after the Commonwealth Games, um, give us a shout and... Um, we'll get you a sign with Matchroom and all that there and um, basically went to the Commonwealth Games, got a bronze medal and beat some good kids on the way and then I just thought if I stay amateur, I'll have to move up to light heavyweight at 81 and it's just starting all over again and getting all my points back again because I couldn't make 75 no more, it was just too hard and um, I was drained at the weight, I, um, I wasn't uh, performing to how I should have been, I was just I actually trained to make weight so it was basically getting, um, I didn't really like uh, boxing anymore but then I made uh, I, I had a long think about it and I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to turn over and I spoke to Charles Sims and uh, Tony Sims and then they got me in touch with uh, Eddie Hearn and obviously Eddie Hearn's heard of me through like the Commonwealth Games, uh, all the tournaments I've won, do you know what I mean? So um, it wasn't that hard, my name was already out there, do you know what I mean? So um, I just come down uh, come down to training for um, a few months and then they got me signed with Eddie Hearn and then went from there onwards. Bit of a commute like, isn't it? Yeah, so... So, um, now, I was actually going to ask about, like, as a successful amateur, how you then choose a trainer and you stick with the amateur bobs. You've just explained that there was something that approached you. And how did you find the gym, your first few sessions of the Sims? It was good, yeah. It was obviously, I was at America with GB and then my time difference was all, uh, all mixed up because I had come back from America and I think I had two days at home. So all my, diff my time difference was all mixed up. But, um uh, obviously, I wanted to like show Tony that I was good enough um, to turn over pro, and like, obviously to show him how good it was. So um, yeah, it was hard. It was hard training. Obviously, the time differences was a bit mixed up, but um, the training was really hard, and it's still really hard now. My body's still not really used to it. You know, the pro training to the amateur training is a lot different. Um, a lot different to amateur. Do you know what I mean? So um, it's a lot more hard and a lot more longer. Do you know what I mean? But um, when I come down with Tony Sims, it was um, he pushed me for my paces and. Um, I done, got some good sparring in and um, he gave me some of the runs to do, what they do when we were on the training camp and it was hard. I mean, it was basically just give me a little feel how it's going to be when I do turn over if I really want to be down there. Do you know what I mean? So he pushed me through my paces and um, um, he liked me and then I just went from there onwards, really. So going into a bit more detail, what are the, some of the, the differences? For Imagine I, I don't have much of an idea, but like between amateur and pro, obviously we hear there's always a difference in the styles. They're like two different sports. But from a training point of view, what sort of things are you doing differently? It was just obviously, the main thing was longer rounds and sparring and the bag work. And then obviously the runs, like was going up big hills and um, doing sprints uphill, like all to get strength in your legs. I mean, it's just, it's hard to explain really. It's just a lot harder than people think it is. Like our gym's really hard training. Like 
people can turn pro and go to another gym and it'll be easy training. They'll think, oh, pro's easy. But where Tony's got us there, Tony's got us on a schedule every week. And it's one that I'd like that some of the poses actually come and just said, no way, we don't want to train with you, Tony, no more. It's that hard of training. Like, when I go to the runs, I actually get nervous, like, like, like a fight. So um, they are hard. And um, like, obviously, the night before, I've got the run next morning. Like, I can't sleep. It's that hard. Like, Tony puts us through, like, hell and back. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, he gets us ready for the fight. Do you know what I mean? So um, everything's basically on Tony. He puts us through our paces. Do you know what I mean? You're more, more nervous about the fight now than running. They're running. Oh, it's got me really nervous what they're running. Like, they would do, I think, up the stairs. And, like, uh, there's all oh, another ones. But it just depends what you're good at. Like, some boys are good at another thing. Some, like, I'm bad at the stairs. I mean, that's my worst one. And then um, I get one nerve. I'm nervous oh, before them. Like, I'm, I'm nervous more than them when I fight. I can hear it in your voice. It's, it's bringing back memories for you. Yeah, I just, uh, I'm actually looking forward to get back into training on Monday. But when I'm back into camp, up the camp, I'm not looking forward to that there because that is just, that is just a nightmare. So, like, obviously, from your first camp and agreeing to like to have Tony as your trainer and signing with Matchroom, how long was it before you made your debut? Um, it was about it was quite long actually because um, Tony didn't want us to support us in. Obviously, I'm only fighting a journeyman, but Tony didn't want to put me in if I wasn't right. Um, so we I done like a like a four month camp, like not a proper full training, but four months just to get used to how to turn my style over from amateur to pro. Tony doesn't, doesn't want to chuck you in. Tony, like, make sure you're right before you get put in. Like, some Tony trainers just put you in. Just think, oh, we're going to get money out of it anyway. Tony doesn't think that. Tony thinks of yourself first and they put us in. Do you know what I mean? So, no, that's, that's it went. That's sensible. I can't really argue with the logic there. Yeah. So then, obviously, you get to that point. As we've said, you, you made your debut in Newcastle on, like, on the, the Lewis Ritson undercards. For anyone that doesn't know, how did your debut go? Uh, went went very well to say with yeah it went about I think it was about fifteen seconds um, <laughs> you, in the first round but four so, months um, worth of grafting and then done within less than twenty seconds yeah that's the reason why I got put on so many shows so many quick because I was stopping everyone very quick so when I stopped that boy I got put on a show straight away and another show don't mean that's how it that's how I got kept fighting very regularly do you know what I mean so um that's how it happened really so every time I was knocking everyone out quick I was getting put on early shows do you know what I mean because I was not getting a long distance fight. So I just thought, oh, I'm just going to keep knocking everyone out and I'll keep getting put on shows, do you know what I mean? So, it went like that. And, and be honest, how much of you is sort of frustrated that you haven't had a chance to put your, your practice in, like, into an actual fight? How much of you is just chuffed that you, you're smashing through, fellas? Yeah, basically everyone goes to me, can John do the long distances? Can John do this? Can John do that? Well, listen, I'm knocking out journeymen when people can't knock out. Do you know what I mean, um, that, that, that's the whole top and bottom of it. And then my last opponent there, Anthony Fox, um, People actually, it's like when that fight got announced, people actually thought I was going to lose. Like, they're thinking, oh, I know his record's 10 times better than what, what it looks, uh, do you know what I mean? But I, everyone thought I was going to lose, or there was not a chance I was going to stop on those saying. And I, I knew the training I was doing and put my body through the, what I was putting my body through, and um, I knew I was going to stop him. Uh, it was either going to be early or late, do you know what I mean? And I got him late, do you know what I mean? And um, the training, when Tony puts you through the training and you do the full camp, you know you're fit, you know you're not going to blow out or anything like that. Was there anything different with your training for, for that like most recent fight? Did you have anything sort of specific to Anthony Fox or was it still just more of what you were sort of working on? And just more of what, yeah, just more of what I've done and um, obviously um, working on things, what we've done wrong and uh, like what I couldn't do with Anthony Fox. And um, yeah, basically on, on lockdown, I, um, I hurt my shoulder. I actually um, fractured my shoulder. Um, on a, a running and um, I fucked on my shoulder and, I, and I, I come back and um, I was supposed to be boxing that boy from Love Island um, but then uh, Tony said no we have to wait till you see your shoulder is and then I, I basically come into that fight that Anthony Fox fight um, just obviously my first fight back I was obviously sparring with my shoulder and that, that was perfect in training I followed training camp up I was a bit worried in the fight do you know what I mean I was just thinking you know what something could go wrong here so I had that in the back of my head, do you know what I mean? And Anthony Fox fight, just thinking there could be something wrong with my shoulder, something could happen here, do you know what I mean? So um, I just had to think that over and over. But uh, the whole training camp towards that fight was was perfect. I'd done everything right. My running, my sparring, I was doing more around sparring. I was beating my times in the running. Um, I couldn't do much more, to be fair with you, on that training camp. And um, uh, my times and everything in my rounds was shown, shown in the, that training camp, what I, what I come up with, do you know what I mean? But what I've been working on, I didn't really show in that fight. Like um, I was doing some silly things, like I was still bringing my amateur game back into, like put my chin in the air and that there. But um, obviously, the better the opponent's going to be, the better I'm going to 
it's the better you can bring it up to me. Do you know what I mean? I've still never shown my full boxing, like how I can box yet. Do you know what I mean? Um, I've still got to show that yet, but um, everyone knows I can punch hard and I'm getting sick of that now, to be fair with you. And people's going to me, ah, John's only got that one shot. Well, hopefully I can show that next few fights if somebody can come at me and um, I can show my boxing ability. Yeah, it's something that obviously gets leveled at prospects a lot that like you never really see everything from them. There's always going to be question marks because people say, oh, how does he respond if he gets caught on the chain? How does he respond if he gets put down? But you don't really want to be facing those problems against journeymen. You want to show that you are a class above that. Exactly. Want, that, that's, that, was that, was position. that was a problem I found for the folks. Everyone was going, oh, what's it going to be like when he gets hit on the chin? What's it going to be like this here? When I went in there and done a bit of boxing, everyone was like, well, the same different side of me because everyone thought I was going to go in there and just blast them out. But I didn't. I, I knew I had eight rounds to do it. Do you know what I mean, I knew Anthony Fox was tough. So I thought I'd go in there, box a bit, use my jab. And when I was doing that, people were just they was going against me, to be fair with you, because you know, they always like to see an exciting fighter, John, coming forward, filling loads of shots. I was doing a more camera performance there, but listen, we have to, we have to sort it out next time and um, hopefully I get a game opponent when it comes to fighting them um, and I can show my skills. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and obviously you mentioned there, like you said, the training went well and everything sort of went as it should have done. So the fair to say that lockdown didn't really hamper your, your progress? And No, no, definitely not. I obviously we had Tony on the phone to us um, when we was on lockdown, telling us what to do in shallow box and like, runs and just Tony was there, always on the phone to us. We basically was in camp, do you know what I mean? Um, but the only thing we couldn't do was like pads, sparring and all that, but where everything Tony was telling us to do was doing, do you know what I mean? Tony was on the phone to us every day. What run to do? What to do? We was FaceTiming them doing shadow boxing. Do you know what I mean? So we was really half decent fitness going back into into camp. But then at the end of lockdown, I fractured my shoulder as I said, and then it, I thought I was going to push back. I was supposed to get put in the first show, um, yeah. but then obviously I fractured my shoulder. The, I done something bad. Do you know what I mean? And uh, fractured my shoulder doing when I'm running, and then I, well, I was sick of the pig. And then I got Eddie Hunt put me in the second last show. Thankful. And you touched on it earlier, but do you want to just go into a bit more detail about the whole build-up around fight camp and the social distancing and all that? How much of a challenge was it to sort of just stick to your game and stick to the, the boxing in the build-up to that? It was, uh, as, as I said, I, I had like the kind of experience to have that in amateur. I had that kind of, was kind of the same, but obviously where you had to wear the face mask when you went out in the public and like, like it was cornered off from everyone. It felt a bit different, to be fair with you. And um, obviously, we had tier teams in there like a few weeks before, so we kind of knew what it was going to be like in there. We had to bring our own telly. Like we had fridges, lucky enough, in our room. But some of the boys never had fridges. They had to bring their own fridges. Uh, Felix Cash been like some cooking things to cook on. Do you know what I mean? There, there was a lot of different things what we had to do, but um, we got around it. And the main thing was, I got the win. Do you know what I mean? And um, it was just basically the, the hardest part was being locked in the room for 24 hours or whatever it was in the room for. Do you know what I mean? Then you had to wait to see if you passed the test. Do you know what I mean? Thinking, oh, if my opponent passed, if, if I passed, do you know what I mean? It's just, um, it was a lot more different, but um, that was it, yeah. And then obviously, once you got in the ring, you just said like business as usual, isn't it? It's, it's he, he, bit, so it was a nice yeah, venue, was a nice backdrop, but. Just got to get was, on. With um, it was it was good. Yeah, it was um, when I got to the venue, it was a lot better than I expected. To be fair with you, like it was, you actually had to be there to see it. Do you know what I mean, um, yeah. like the way they set it all up, it was unbelievable. To be fair with you, um, Eddie had done a very good job, and um, we just come there to do the job, and we done it. Do you know what I mean, it was just basically the only thing you didn't have is the audience there. Do you know what I mean? Um, think, think it's got a bit of a future. The, the the fight camp and he's some summer shows in his garden next year. Uh, it could be that would be a good thing, but. Um, it's just um, you could put some of the viewers in there, like some of the audience, but not, not a lot of people could fit in there. Do you know what I mean? To what? You could put the little next gen shows and that in there, it'd be all right, but um, we'd have to wait and see what it comes out of. But if, if, with an audience in there, it'd be very good. It'd yeah. be, I, I would like it, it would be good. I'd definitely box in there again and all that for a fact. And then, well, obviously, we've talked about, like you've seen the first Fight Camp show, the, the second from last Fight Camp show. What about the last one? I saw you tweeted out, or you've, you've been quite vocal about one of the fights on that one between um, Jack Cullen and Zach Shelley. How did you see yeah. that one going, first of all? Did you have a I had uh, Zach Shelley, Jack Shelley winning. Um, to be fair with you, if I was in with Jack Cullen that night, I think I would have knocked him out. Um, he's just too easy to hit, and um, he's not a super middleweight. He just moved up, any he? So um, he's maybe big, and so, yeah, but he's, he's very weak. He hasn't got power in his shots, and... Um, you can go in there and take a shot. I mean, you're not scared to get hit off him. And um, he's actually, yeah, he surprised me a bit, but I knew he was going to be ten he's going to be a lot stronger than him. Do you know what I mean? 
What do you make of the scorecards? Obviously, the result itself was actually a draw, wasn't it? There was the, the scorecards was quite bad to fail with you. I had them winning. Um, I think even four. I think I had him winning four rounds, like four rounds up. I think it was that there what I had him. But um, yeah, I had actually winning. I think there's going to be a rematch between them two, and um, I see the same result again. Um, obviously, a fair result, and that's actually winning. And I think you yeah, you said you'd beat them both on the same night. Obviously, not shying away. Uh, they fairly confident in you. No, I'm still backing them words, and uh, I'm still saying it on here. I'll beat them too on the exact same night. Is that the sort um, of level you see, you want to get in with pretty soon then? Obviously, you touch on Yeah, that, you, uh, I want to get a level above them, to be fair with you. I, I know how good I can be. and I know the better opponent's going to be, the better I'm going to show me, do you know what I mean? And uh, I, need, I need these uh, opportunities, do you know what I mean? And um, beating Anthony folks, knocking them out the way I did, um, kind of showed that, do you know what I mean? I'm a levels above these boys. And um, then to them, I'm a levels above them. And I'll show, if, if I have to fight them, I'll fight them. I'm not, I'll fight anyone. It's a fight them good day. And um, I'm levels above. I think I'm I'm British title level now. I reckon I can beat win the British title right now. And that that's just my own uh, thing. Me, I think I'm mad. If they take me off the last performance, yeah, you'd say no way John would win the British title just now. But put the British title in front of me and we'll see. I'd look forward to that to be honest. Like I'd, I'd obviously be ahead of this. I'll like look have a look through the sort of the British super middle rankings and I think on box rec you're sort of in the top ten anyway and like Apart I'm from great, yeah. the likes of like obviously Callum Smith and like Billy Joe Saunders, the ones who are already at world level, there's like I'm talking like Lerone Richards, that sort of level. Like, why yeah. would you fancy yourself getting in amongst that that sort of level of opponent in the, the near future? I, I know his style, Lerone Richards, and I can beat him all day long. I can outbox Lerone Richards if I really want to, because I just I know my pedigree for amateur. I've boxed ten, I've outboxed ten times better boxers than Lerone Richards. And, and with power, you know he's got no power. I mean, but uh, listen, it's all right saying it on camera and video, and just you've got to go in there and do it. Do you know I mean, and um, when I get my opportunity, if he moves, I think he's going to go into European or whatever he is going to go on to. Um, but whoever else wants to step up and fight me for the, for it, I'll, I'll fight them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So whoever next, that I want to eliminate a next or. And then you get discussed with with your promoter, with your trainer, and managers about like what's going to come next and when you. I do. Uh, I'll find out tomorrow basically what's what what's what. Um, Should have done I it then. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen to fair with you. So um, I just have to wait and see. Do you know what I mean, just wait and see what's going to happen. But um, hopefully, I can get an eliminator for the British title uh, next. Um, that's what I got told. So. I'm just checking on my phone here because we put it out earlier on Twitter. We've got a couple of um, our followers asking questions and want yeah. to ask you a few things. One of them was like, where do you see yourself? Like, from speaking to you, you're obviously very confident. You obviously want to get to that high level. But say like this time next year, imagine boxing's all up and running. You get a few fights under your belt. Like this time next year and, and sort of further into the future, do you ever look that far ahead? Yes, the next, next time it's next year, I want to be... Um... I want to have a British title and then defended it. Do you know what I mean? Um, I want to win the British title outright. Um, obviously, you've got to defend it three times. And um, But then again, if something else comes up, I have to move on. Do you know what I mean? But um, something better. Do you know what I mean? But I'd like to win the British title outright. Um, and hopefully, by this time next year, I've defended it twice. Do you know what I mean? I once. Do you know what I mean? Even once. Do you know what I mean? I know I'm, I'm going to win the British title next year. It's just to get the boy in the room with me and give, give me the opportunity. What I deserve. That actually ties in with one of the other questions we've had there. Chris McFarlane said, like, out of all the belts in boxing, which one do you want to win the most? Is it the British something that stands out to you? Obviously, the, 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 yeah, the British. Um, but the WBC, the green belt, um, world title is the main belt, and it's, it's the daddy belt, and um, that's the main one. But that's the ultimate goal. The, the, the short-term goal just now is the British title. Um, it's a very good belt, and um, I could do a win outright. You know, I think the WBC is losing a bit of credibility with their... It is, yeah. I think that's the best belt to share with you, but there's that many world title belts now. You don't know. I don't know. I don't know them all. <laughs> there's that <laughs> many. Do you know what I mean? Um, Frank Warren's got a few of them, WBO ones, or whatever they're called. Do you know what I mean? So, um, listen, a world title is a world title at the end of the day, and um, if I can get one, um, I'll be very happy. Do you know what I mean? And um, especially the green one. That's the main belt. Of course. And then, obviously, you said you're not sure about anything. It's like... Any chance you've come back to Newcastle for the, the card that's supposedly happening in October? Um, yeah, I'd love to fight back in Newcastle. I love Newcastle. Do you know what I mean, um, it's a good um, good audience there, and every time I've boxed there, I've um, I've boxed well, and um, basically, yeah, I've got half of my family there anyway. Do you know what I mean? So 
if I if I can get the nod and I'm in training camp, do you know what I mean? Because my next fight's a ten rounder. It's not like I'm not like doing these four rounds, six rounds no more. Where I can just get put on. I'm doing a ten rounder against a, a, a capable opponent. But I'll just have to wait and see what uh, Tony says and my, my, the people say. Do you know what I mean my management and that? Good man, good man. I think like generally we obviously we're from the northeast. Newcastle often is that bridge between like Scotland and what happens further down. So you're based down south in England. Yeah. Do you think like at some point you'd be boxing in Scotland? Would you like to like, bring big time boxing back to north of the border? Obviously, you've got Josh Taylor at the moment flying the flag. Ideally, I imagine you'd want to get to like his level of success, but also have yeah. to profile and bring the thing, bring the. Bring boxing back to Scotland, I suppose. Listen, Scotland is where I'm from, and uh, I'll never forget that. Do you know what I mean? And um, I'd love to bring big nights back, and um, obviously Eddie Hearn's the man for that. And um, I can just ask, and if he if he does it, he does it. Do you know what I mean? Um, um, Scotland's one of my main places to box back at, even anywhere in Scotland. Do you know what I mean? So I just have to wait and see what um, Tony Sims says and Eddie Hearn. Um, but I, I would say there's going to be a big show in Scotland, and I'll be definitely on it. How do you rate boxing in Scotland? Like Scottish boxing, obviously, you've mentioned Taylor there. There's like legs of Lee McGregor won last night. Cash Farouk, obviously, was a very close fight with McGregor. And then yourself, do you think like, the, the quality is there, the depth of quality is there? Or do you say maybe. Yeah, they're definitely. But when the, but Scotland boxing is starting to quote now. There's obviously Kean Smith as well. He's a very good fighter. And um, there's a lot of Scottish boys about there. Do you know what I mean? So um, there's definitely a, they definitely can make a show out of it. Um, uh, there's a lot of top talent coming through and um, there's obviously not, there's not a lot of people showing it because obviously they haven't got good promoters so they can't get televised and uh, there's a lot of boys on the coverage I mean, what's a lot better than what they are. There's another boy, Nathaniel Collins, he's a good, he's a good fighter as well. So we just have to wait and see. Um, um, if there's a show in Scotland, then boys will be put on and um, if I'm speaking to Eddie Hearn, I'll put the name forward, I mean, to, to say, try and get them on. Right. Well, next time we speak to him, we'll, we'll drop that in as well. So Definitely. After a little bit. But uh, thank you very much for your time, mate. Honestly, absolute pleasure speaking to you and all the best. Cheers, buddy. Yeah, thank you very Cheers, much. Yeah. Thanks for the interview. <laughs>